What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Scorpio TV. This time, we have Chilling Scares, five most disturbing Reddit posts uploaded October 29th, 2022. Now, y'all already know all the important links will be down in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see what Chilling Scares got for us today. November of 2013, a Reddit account that's since been deleted made a post on the Let's Not Meet subreddit. R slash Let's Not Meet is a subreddit where people share actual true scary encounters they've experienced. The poster explains how he had just found the subreddit and wanted to post an experience of his own. He lived in Brisbane, Australia at the time. He recalls how his dad had just purchased Foxtel, which was cable TV in Australia. Only the TV in the lounge room could use the cable box, but the poster really wanted to use it in his room downstairs. He didn't want to buy a second cable box, so he instead opted to buy an AV transmitter, a much cheaper option. An AV transmitter was basically a two-part piece of hardware. One piece would connect to the cable box upstairs in the lounge room, and the other would connect to the TV back downstairs. It would then transmit a wireless signal. This would allow him to receive a video signal to his TV downstairs. The first image in the post shows the TV in the room on the dresser. The poster goes on to explain how he and his sister were the only ones home when he decided he wanted to try and set it up. He connected the AV transmitter to the cable box upstairs and to his TV downstairs, but it wasn't working. He tried changing the channel, switching around the cables, nothing was working. That's when he remembered that the cable box upstairs wasn't even plugged in, so obviously it wasn't going to work but the screen then started fuzzing in. After a while, a bedroom could be seen on the TV. Immediately, he pulled out his phone and took a picture. At first, he thought it was his bedroom, so he ran out. He went upstairs to tell his sister. They later went back down. The TV was still getting a signal, but they had no idea how. The AV receiver plugged in was somehow receiving a live feed. They were able to confirm that it wasn't the poster's bedroom or any bedroom in the house. They waited until their parents got home, and when they did, they told them about it. All of them went down to the TV. This time, there was a man in the bedroom. The poster took another picture. He then explained how his dad recognized the man as one of their neighbors. Somehow, the AV transmitter was receiving their neighbor's camera feed. None of them really knew what to do. This went on for a week, and they started feeling kind of weird having access to this. No shit. The poster went on to explain how their neighbors had been having renovations done to their house. Workers would be at the place pretty much all day. They again tried turning on the TV to fix the signal. It was still showing their neighbor's bedroom, but this time they saw their neighbor's plumber. Eventually he went right up to the camera and looked directly down the lens. He started messing with it before putting it back. The poster's dad told their neighbor about the camera, but they had no idea what he was talking about. He convinced them to let him go to the room to try and find the camera. Hidden in the wall, he did find it. They immediately called the police. Hell yeah. The poster Crown. didn't hear anything more for the next week. Crown but they bitch. eventually asked their neighbors whatever came of the situation. Apparently, the police camped out by the house each night and found that one car in particular would always park right next to it at the same time. A man inside would pull up his laptop, but not get out of the car. He would drive off before the sun came up. The man was discovered to be the plumber, the man who planted the camera. That's where the post ends. In a reply comment, the poster confirmed the man was arrested, but he doesn't mention what he all got charged with. This post was a reply comment in an Ask Reddit thread. The original question read, What is the creepiest thing that has ever actually happened to you? One of the top comments is a guy who recalls a set of disturbing experiences he had throughout his life. He says they're 100% true, and even shares a video he took as supporting evidence. He starts by sharing an experience he had when he was 8 years old. It was 11pm, and he was walking his dog with his mom out in his neighborhood, which was in Lansing, Michigan. He said it was quiet that night, but all of a sudden he could hear this whistling sound coming from a nearby swamp. His mom heard it too. He said at first it sounded like a bird, but the whistle had a more human-like tone and wasn't really consistent, making him think it was a person. He remembers his mom looking very concerned, 
and immediately changing directions back towards the house. That was the first experience. The second happened two years later. He was again taking his dog for a walk out late at night, but this time alone. He heard the whistling again, and immediately remembered how he felt the first time he heard it two years ago. He sprinted back to the house. Nothing would happen for years after that. He was now 24 and moved away from Michigan to South Dakota. For the 4th of July, he and his girlfriend decided to sit along the bank of the Missouri River in a somewhat popular spot to watch fireworks from a distance. Most of the other people had moved upriver to get a better view, leaving them pretty much alone. That's when he once again heard whistling, reminding him of the two experiences he had years ago now when he was a kid. This time, he pulled out his phone and started recording. It picked up the whistling. He attached the recording to his reply comment. He questions his girlfriend, hoping that this time it was just her. No. But it wasn't her. Hell no, it wasn't. The whistling continues, until eventually the two of them hear slight paddling out in the water. He turns the camera, and in the darkness you can just barely make out a man in a canoe slowly paddling towards them. where the video ends but he did say that when the man got close enough to the shore he stood up and yelled out who are you to this the man then simply turned around and started slowly paddling back towards the way he came without saying a word that was the last time he ever heard the whistling he still doesn't know what to make of it to think somebody would have stalked him all those years from michigan to south dakota doesn't exactly seem the most likely right but it's still possible he basically ends the reply comment with many unanswered questions. Like, who was the guy in the canoe? And was it the same guy he heard whistling when he was a kid? What does the guy want from him? He doesn't know the answers to these questions, but he says that he still worries that he might sometime hear the whistling again. Might not I wanted to take a minute to talk about this video's sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based around an old historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords or ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land in Edelston, Scotland, to which you'll then be sent a certificate officially giving you your title. And it's not like some fake certificate either. You can officially change your plane ticket or even credit card to include lord or lady before your name. Your certificate will contain a unique plot number which lets you see the exact location of your land at any time. So, for example, this is exactly where on the earth my one square foot of land is located. The coolest part about established titles is that for every plot of land that's sold, they work with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help support global reforestation efforts. It makes for an amazing last minute gift while helping to preserve the woodlands of Scotland. Established titles is running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code CHILLING10, you can get an additional 10% off. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot, like within a few minutes of walking. So go to establishedtitles.com slash chilling10 or use the link in the description to get your own title. That whistling was too close, I ain't gonna lie. Roommate Wanted, Female Only. Oh no. Nah. This was the title of a Reddit post uploaded almost 10 years ago now. It refers to the title of a Craigslist ad a girl named Amanda had seen while looking for a place to rent. 225. That's the post it? consists of her detailed experience. Amanda was browsing the internet when she came across the ad. The listing was for a room in a house for 225 a month, That's which was pretty good. cheap for the area. That's too good. The occupant listed herself as a 23-year-old college student who wasn't comfortable living with any males. Amanda would get her own room and bathroom. The only thing was the Craigslist ad only had one picture. It was a picture of the outside of the house, no. no pictures of the inside. But still interested, Amanda sent an email to the occupant. In less than an hour, she got an email back with all the details and the time to stop by. Come on, bro. The time said 8 p.m., 
passed when it would have gotten dark. In the email, the occupant said this was because she worked late. So, that night at 8 p.m., Amanda arrived at the house. She walked up to the front door and was met by a handwritten note that said, Door broken. Use back door. No! What? She started walking around towards the back. Oh my god. As she did, she noticed how unkempt the place looked. The windows were covered in dust, and the grass was way overgrown. She knocked on the back door. An older man opened it. Oh, see? At first, she thought she was at the wrong house. But the guy went on to explain how he was the landlord, and that the occupant asked him to show her around. Sure. The post described him as clearly in his 40s, unshaven, and a guy who looked like he lived in his car. Probably do. A bit hesitant, Amanda stepped inside and allowed the man to give her a tour. Immediately, she noticed the place had no furniture whatsoever. There was only one light on, the light in the kitchen. The landlord would answer questions, but was irritable to keeping lights on for too long. He rushed her around, only letting her look in rooms for a few seconds. They eventually got to one room that the landlord wouldn't open. He said it was the occupant's room and that she wouldn't want them to go in there. As they were heading back to the living room, Amanda noticed a plank nailed across the front door. She tried to get out of there, thanking the owner for the tour and heading back towards the back door. I think I've heard this story. That's when the man perked up and mentioned how he forgot to show her the, the basement. basement. Yes, I've heard he this. He explained before. how it was just recently furnished and would make for a great rec room. It was in a Mr. Nightmare. It was standing radio. between her and the back door. She felt like she had no other choice. What? He opened the basement door, saying, Ladies first, as he motioned her downstairs. God. Just then, an unrelated car parked outside on the street. At the exact same time, Amanda received a text on her phone. She pretended it was a call and faked a conversation about her friend being outside waiting to pick her up. She quickly excused herself, leaving the back door and now full on sprinting to her car. When she got home, she called the cops. She tried going back to the Craigslist ad, but it was deleted. Right. It turns out the house had been foreclosed over six months earlier. Yeah. The property was completely abandoned. There was never any real occupant or any real room to rent. The room the man didn't want to show her on the tour turned out to be the room he lived in. Four tours. But the worst part was the basement. Police found a piece of fishing line at shin level strewn across the stairs right. about halfway down. There was no furniture down there as the man had said. There was nothing but a pile of old blankets, a broom handle wrapped in leather belts, and a small box with rolls of duct tape. The poster never mentioned if the man was caught or not. Yeah, I heard this in the Mr. Nightmare video before. In 2014, Jenny, a single mother, would make a post on Reddit titled Experience Using Sleep As Android App. Sleep As Android is an app that's supposed to help you improve your sleeping habits. It's basically a more advanced alarm. It will track your sleep cycles and wake you up at the most beneficial time. One of the features of the app is that it records audio during the night. Ooh. In the post, Jenny explains how she had the app for a few months. She would sometimes review the audio, but all she ever heard was herself coughing, moving around in bed, stuff like that. That was until one night, when at 2.04 a.m., the app caught something different. Jenny was going through the recordings to delete them when she found it. She posted the audio along with the Reddit post. a male voice can be heard responding to Jenny's sleep talking. She says, what are you doing? To which another voice quickly replies, nothing. Some clicking sounds then start up before the voice speaks again. Although it's not clear what's said this time. The only two people in the room that night were Jenny and her three-year-old. But the voice that's talking sounds much deeper, something that neither Jenny or her three-year-old could have replicated. One Redditor took it so far as to test this, in a post titled, The Voice in the Famous Sleep App Recording is Not the Woman Talking to Herself, he gives proof to prove his point. He basically goes into detail about how the human voice works, and that the pitch of the voice in the audio clip couldn't have been replicated by the woman. Her voice was just too high. He even reached out to her and got further samples of her voice to confirm this. This led many to believe that she was the victim of a home invasion, and that someone was in the process of searching her bedroom for things to steal. But to this day, we still don't know. The man
man in the audio clip was never identified. The original poster has since moved to a different house. I hope so. Either that or a ghost. In 2012, an Ask Reddit thread was posted with the title, What is the creepiest true story someone has ever told you? A comment that has since been deleted by the user recounts an experience her parents had told her, where they had unknowingly encountered the serial killer Ted Bundy on their first date. Oof. It was around the time of the day where the two would have said goodnight, when the male in the situation suggested they go for a midnight hike up Provo Canyon in Utah. He was familiar with the place, and didn't want the date to end, so he figured it was a good idea. She agreed, so they drove up to the mouth of the canyon, got out, and started hiking with only the light provided by the moon. The two started getting a bad feeling when they came up to a section of path under some trees, which had no access to light. The path was almost pitch black, but they continued on. As they kept walking, the man felt his foot hit something soft directly in the middle of the path. It was too dark to see anything. Instead of inspecting it, the both of them agreed to turn around and run back to the car. I've heard the story. They soon forgot about it. It was an Until many years Ted later, Bundy after did. being married for some time, when they were watching an interview with Ted Bundy around right. the time he had been captured, he the interviewer asked caught. him to describe the time that he felt the closest to being caught. Right, right, right. Yep. Ted Bundy proceeded to explain the night that he lured a girl into Provo Canyon and took her life. He said that shortly after, he heard a couple walking up the trail and managed to hide in the trees just before they would have been able to see him. And they ran into the body. A man then walked directly into the woman's body, right. but for some reason just turned around and walked away. That night, the poster's father had walked directly into a corpse without even realizing it. The serial killer Ted Bundy was only feet away from him, and he had no idea. That was where the reply comment ended. So I've heard two of these stories before. Still good stories. It was definitely nice to listen to some true, scary stories. What well, does it say true? in the title but i've heard two out of these five stories before so i know that they were in true you know horror story videos so yeah hope y'all enjoyed and that's it for this one i want you all to stay safe stay blessed stay humble thank you again for watching and i will see you all in the next video peace